This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Okay, welcome to another video presentation brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at functions, relations, and graphs. And we start by defining a relation, and we say that a relation is a set of ordered pairs. All right, so we can write this in the form r equals open bracket x1, comma y1, close bracket, right? x2, comma y2, x3, comma y3, and all the way up to xn, comma yn. So once we have our ordered pairs written out in a set, then we say that that set forms a relation, right? And it's important to note that we can show our relation using what we call a mapping diagram, right? So in one column, we have all the x coordinates, and in the other column, we have all the y coordinates. And then once we have each x corresponding with a y value, then we say that these pairs form a relation. D, right, which is a set of all the x values x1 through xn, is called the domain of the relation, right? And R, which is a set of all the y values, is called the range of the relation, and otherwise called the codomain in some situations, right? We now move on to look at the types of relations, and we say that there are four types of relations, starting with what we call a one-to-one -one correspondence or a one-to-one -one relation. Each element from the range has only one pre-image and each element from the domain has only one image. That means we have a one-to-one -one isomorphism. <laughs> Did I just say isomorphism? Each element corresponds with only one element from the other set. So we have a one-to-one -one correspondence. Then we have what we call a one-to-many relation. That means each element from the domain is mapped to more than one element in the range, right? And we have the mapping diagram here. Then we move on to look at what we call a many-to-one. That means more than one element in the domain is mapped to the same element in the range. That is more than one element of the domain maps on to one element in the or each element in the range is being mapped to more than one element from the domain. Then we talk about many to many. That means each element in the domain is mapped to more than one element in the range, and each element in the range has more than one pre-image from the domain. We then move on to define what is a function. So we now say that a function is a relation which maps each element from the domain to one and only one element in the range at a time, right? So I'm going to repeat that for you. So we say that a function is a relation which maps each element from the domain to one and only one element in the range at a time. And so when we look at the set of relations that we looked at, we realize that only two from that set actually reflects what a function is. And those two are the many to one and the one to one. So a function can be a many-to-one function and a one-to-one -one function, right? So there are two types of functions that come from the set of relations. So we say that all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions, right? We then move on to look at some function notation, right? And the first type of notation is the mapping notation, which, which reads F maps A to B, right? Second, we have our f of x notation equals y, which is an expression in terms of x, and then we have our x fx coordinate pair form, right? These are the three notations that you might see while working functions questions. So now we go into some functions questions. For example, we have f of x equals x plus 2, where f maps a to b, and a is a set containing 1, 2, and 3, b is a set of natural numbers. And so this question asks us to show the relation using a mapping diagram and also we are to find the range of this function. So we start by saying 
let's look at the values of x, which represents the domain that is a when we put those values in a column, one, two, and three. And then those values are being mapped onto some other values in the range which we have to compute, right? So one is being mapped to three because one plus two is three. Two is being mapped to four because two plus two is four. And three is being mapped to five because three plus two is five, right? And those values which we are mapped to, we can now write them down as the range of F. So the range of F is just the set which contains three, four, and five. It is very important to distinguish between the codomain of F and the range of F, right? And here, we see that the codomain is the set containing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to infinity, because that's the set of all natural numbers, right? But the codomain, the codomain is not equal to the range in this case, right? So we say that the codomain is the suggested set of y values, which f can map onto, while the range is the actual values that f is mapping onto, right? So the range is the actual set of values that f is mapping onto. And we move right along into our second example, right? Example number two, where we have g, which maps x onto y, where x is the set of values in between one and five, and y is the set of y values in between one and 25. g of x is equal to x squared. So notice we are using all, we're using two notations to express g of x. Right, and we also have the set builder notation being used as well. Right, so this question now asks us to find g of 2 and find g of 4, which is pretty simple. This question asks us to find g of 2 and g of 4, which is pretty simple. Right, so we go ahead and plug 2 into g of x, wherever in the function you see x, you put 2. So since we have x squared, we're going to have 2 squared, which is equal to 4, and g of 4 is going to be 4 squared, which is equal to 16. Right, moving on to example number three, we are given h of x equals 2x plus 3 over x minus 1, f of x equals 2x minus 7, and g of x equals x plus 2 all squared. Find h of 2, h of 10, f of 2, f of 3, g of 6, and g of 1. To compute these solutions, we have to look where in the function we see x and plug in the required number. So for h of 2, we're going to look in h of x, and wherever we see x, we're going to plug in 2. So this becomes 2 times 2 plus 3 divided by 2 minus 1, which becomes 4 plus 3 divided by 1, which is equal to 7. h of 10 is equal to 2 times 10 plus 3 divided by 10 minus 1, which is equal to 23 divided by 9. f of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 7, which is equal to 4 minus 7, which gives us negative 3. And f of 3 is equal to 2 times 3 minus 7, which is equal to 6 minus 7, which comes down to negative 1. g of 6 is equal to 6 plus 2 all squared, which is equal to 8 squared, which gives us 64. And g of 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 all squared, which is equal to 3 squared, which gives us 9. That is it for this video. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe for future post notifications.